Hey guys, we're gonna do a full face of Sicily today, and the main reason why I wanted to do this is to give this Blur Expert powder a different shot, a different try. I did a full review of this powder, posted it a while ago, um, probably three weeks ago maybe at this point. Someone from the PR department in Sicily reached out to me and they were interested in my experience or whatever, and we kind of went back and forth and talked about it because my review on this, um, I thought the, the result of the powder was really nice, but I don't know, I thought it had quite a bit of pigmentation. I thought it oxidized on my skin a little bit and it took me a little while to kind of get used to it. So anyway, her suggestion was to actually put it on before foundation and I never do that. I never put powder down before foundation, but I feel like I saw that trend on YouTube maybe last year or something where people were powdering first and then putting their like liquid or cream foundation down after. And I just thought that was crazy. That was just crazy talk. So I never tried it, but that's what they suggested. So I thought I would take the opportunity to do like a full face of Sicily. Let's go ahead and try this Blur Expert powder. So I keep seeing like ads on Instagram and uh, little headlines and stuff saying that this is like the most popular Sicily product. This is the product that has sold out the most quickly. Everyone seems to be going nuts for this powder. So I really wanna make it work. We're gonna put it on first. So I basically have all my skincare down. I was gonna put um, some primer down, but then I thought, you know what? I don't want to like interfere with this whole experience. So I've got my Sony G Face One brush. I'm just gonna, gonna swirl it in there, pick up some product, pick up a little bit more product. And in my video, I found that I really like kind of pressing in the powder and kind of buffing it in, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of just start to buff it in. I wanna see how easy this application is versus all the different tries I was doing when I was applying the powder on after foundation. And I'm gonna just apply this onto the right half of my face so we can hopefully see a difference. Okay, so we have it on this half of my face, very light layer, and nothing on the left half of my face. I don't feel like I see much of a difference at all. Let me go in with a little bit more. Maybe I was a little bit too light-handed. I am picking up product though. Maybe I'll do that pressing in thing. Mm. I do think the pressing in is more effective with this powder. Okay. There, I am definitely starting to see a difference. I'm not sure if it was the pressing, maybe it was just the fact that there was a second layer, but when we go ahead and apply it to this side, I think I'll go ahead and just start pressing and see if that makes a difference. I definitely see its blurring effect for sure, but I still see that little bit of pigmentation. You can see that this half of my face definitely is darker. I'm just gonna sit here for a little while. I wanna see if it gets darker, even darker. I wanna see if it oxidizes at all. Okay, I don't feel like I'm seeing it oxidized, but I do feel like there is a bit of pigment, like I mentioned before. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to this side of my face, and I'm just gonna go right off the bat, just start pressing it, and see if that makes a difference, or if indeed it was like just having more powder down. So, that much powder, and I'm gonna start pressing it in. Pressing it in. Picking up more. Pressing it in. I do feel like pressing it in is more effective because I use the same amount of powder, pretty much the same amount of powder as that first layer on this side, but it just, I don't know, I just didn't really see the powder at all. Uh, but on this side, I definitely see it. I definitely see it. So I'm still all for like pressing in this powder, not really buffing it. Maybe just the buffing kind of buffs it away. I'm not really sure. So anyway, I prefer the pressing in method with like a flat top brush. I'm just gonna add a little bit more to this side so we kind of have like an even amount of powder on both halves of my face. So I think a lot of you asked me also if I felt like this could be enough, you know, in lieu of foundation to just use this. I think if you're looking for some coverage, I don't think you're gonna get it. I mean, you can still see the like hyperpigmentation here. You can still like clear as day, still see all the sunspots that I have, um, any sort of uh, problems that I have uh, around my eyebrows or whatever. So I don't think, if you're looking for coverage, I don't think you're gonna get it with a powder like this, but it is kind of blurring for sure. So my answer to that is really just kind of what you're looking for. Um, I don't always, 
need a lot of coverage so I would probably feel pretty comfortable just wearing this powder out just because I feel like it's kind of just smoothed me out a little bit kind of hazed out my complexion a little bit but let's go ahead and apply some liquid foundation on top so I have the Sicily Fito Blanc uh, cushion foundation and I just love this foundation in fact I love all of the Sisley foundations that I have but I figured I would use this one today it was kind of just what I reached for so I have it in the color three light rose and this has that cool like you press this lever down and the foundation comes out of like a little hole in the middle I'm gonna go ahead and use a sponge and again I'm just gonna apply it to this half of my face Now, I love this foundation, as you guys know, because I think it just is, it's very skin-like. It looks very pretty on the skin. It does, you know, a little bit of coverage, but it doesn't look like you have a mask on. Like, it just looks really, really beautiful. I am, like, the powder, the powder totally amped up, like, the complexion blurring and perfecting. Can you guys see that? Like it just made this foundation that I love, it just made it that much better. It really has done a number on like smoothing. I am so glad <laughs> they told me to use the powder first. And it's made my skin look really soft too. Well, all right, uh, if you guys bought this powder and you haven't tried it underneath your foundation, I would give it a shot. Oh, my AC just kicked in. Sorry. I would give it a shot. I would. I really like this. I really like this. I love this foundation and I love it just a little bit more now. All right, let me finish up the rest of my face and then we can move on. I can sit here and stare at this half of my face, especially right here. It just, it looks like a baby's butt cheek right here. Wow. Okay. All right. Let me, let me finish up my makeup. I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. Baby butt cheeks right here all the way wow this is like my new favorite thing okay uh well i'm so glad i did that uh again i suggest you try that at home if you have that powder give it a shot give it a shot i think that made a world of difference so thank you <laughs> thank you very much to uh sisley for that suggestion that was amazing so at this point i mean do you powder again i get actually no, isn't that interesting? I don't think I need to powder, but you know what? Actually, I definitely don't need to powder. I do this all the time. I forget to put cream products on before I powder. And anyway, I have cream products that I want to show you guys. So let me go ahead and take those out. I wanted to go ahead and show you this Fito Blush Twist in the color number five, Contour. So this is their Contour cream product, cream stick product. And I've only worn this a couple of times, but I really like it. It's very, very subtle, as you can see, uh, for a cream product. It's definitely on the warmer side. Um, so I think you could definitely use it as like a cream bronzer, um, as well as a cream contour. And I have my sponge sitting out here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. It just has a little bit of the foundation on there. So I'm just gonna use the cleaner side and blend this out. And these Sicily um, Fito Twist blushes um, are, they blend out really nicely, but they definitely dry down to like more of a powder finish than a lot of my other cream products. And Sometimes that's not my favorite thing, mainly because a lot of times when that happens, the cream in the stick is kind of powdery, and I find that the application can be a little bit patchy, you know, especially if I do, like, if I just swipe, I find it can be, like, a little bit patchy. But these Sicily sticks are actually really, really creamy when you put them on. Like, they don't feel like they're going to have like as much of a powdery finish as they do when they dry down, but they do. And you know, in the summertime, it's really nice. I mean, I like using cream products in the summertime, but when it sets down to like a powder, I feel like they just last longer. So those are definitely the pros to these Sicily sticks, the tone, the formula. And I think it does a nice job um, just warming up my face a little bit. I'll pat some onto my nose here. 
The one complaint I have about these sticks, all of their Fito twist sticks, and I think I mentioned this in the haul, is the packaging. I just, I don't like this. I feel like I have to be really careful so, you know, my cap doesn't clip the actual product. Um, and I hate that it just sits on top of this case. I wish it clicked on because I feel like caps like this loosen up over time and then if you carry this in your bag and the cap falls off you know it's a big mess so anyway that's my one downside to these stick products just adding a little bit more to where i want a tan all right now i'm going to go in with the uh the fito blush twist but in number six passion and i don't think this is like new new but i think this is their newest color to the range it's just such a pretty peachy color it has like a little bit of a gold sheen to it it's so nice so i'm just going to swipe some onto my cheeks and then blend out such a pretty color and you saw how fast and easy it was to blend but it really sets down to like a powder finish it's so nice i really love this formula especially when it starts to get hot and i start you know sweating all my makeup off these are great. So um, those are the Fito blush twists that I have. So Sicily also has like a highlighter as part of their Fito blush twist line, but I don't have that, which I need to remedy quickly. But I'm going to go ahead and actually use their face powder. So this is their loose uh, Fito Poudre Libre. I have it in the color 1 Irise. It's their loose face powder. And if you want a subtle highlight, this could actually work because it has like a little bit of shimmer to it and it's really lovely and I like using it as a finishing powder if I'm going for like a very luminous kind of look. So I'm going to take my refer brush. I don't know the number. Maybe it's 18 or 19. Anyway, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to pick up some of the powder and just dust it lightly over here. And you know, I haven't powdered since I put the foundation down and all of these cream products, so I do have a little bit of luminosity in my skin there. So everything that you see, or at least that I'm seeing in the monitor, that is not all the powder. The powder is actually uh, more subtle than that. But it just adds like a little bit of like sparkly goodness right there. And it's really quite pretty if you're looking for something kind of subtle. I do have one Sicily brow product that I want to use today. This is uh, they're like three in one, I think brow lift pencil is what it's called. It has a spoolie, it has the actual uh, pencil, and then in the middle there is like a highlighter shade. So this pencil is very soft. So if you have this, you'll probably agree with me, and if you don't have it and you, you know, think you want to get it, it's it's just, it's very soft. You have to be careful. And I ended up getting the color Brun, which is the darkest color. And so I end up generally using this in the fall winter time when I don't mind like a deeper, darker brow. Um, but I'll use it today and hopefully I can use a light hand with it. It has like a teardrop shape to the tip. I hope, I hope you can see that. So it's not like the brow definer where it's just like kind of straight up and down like a rectangle. It has like a little bit of a roundedness at the bottom. So it's teardrop shaped. And I'll use it so that the pointy end is at the bottom so that like when I'm making strokes, I feel like they're a little bit uh, more hair-like. The good thing about a soft pencil is that when you run your spoolie through, it blends out really, really nicely. Thankfully, I didn't go too heavy-handed with the brows, so I think they look they look okay. They look okay. So let's move on to eyeshadow. So I don't actually have any powder eyeshadow from Sisley. I have two of their um, Fito Eye Twists. So I have color number one, and this is like a deluxe sample that I got a while ago, and um, it's just this beautiful kind of taupe with like a metallic sheen to it. And then I also purchased number four, which is like a smoke gray. So we're gonna be using these two today. And I'm gonna basically use the taupe all over the lid and then I'm gonna use this just to kind of add a little bit of dimension to the outer corner. So these eye twists um, basically set down so that they're like smudge proof, crease proof, move proof. Uh, so I like to do one eye at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just swipe a bit over my eyelid here. I'm not being too neat with it. 
and I'm going to take my uh, Sonia G Worker 2 brush and just blend it out a little bit before it sets down. I just want to blend out the edges and make sure I give it kind of a soft look. So there, very, very quick and easy. So now I'm going to take the number four and add this just to the outer corners of my eyes here. I'm being a little bit uh, less cavalier with this color because it is deeper. But I'm just kind of shading in where I want it lightly. And then again, I'm going to go back in with the Worker 2 brush and just soften up the edges and blend out like the pencil strokes. So easy peasy kind of eye look. Two colors gives me enough dimension and really easy to blend out. All right, next I have some of the Fito Coal Star uh, waterproof eyeliners. I have Sparkling Black, Sparkling Bronze, and then Mystic Blue. Uh, Mystic Blue doesn't have any like micro glitters in there, but the two sparkling colors do. And if I remember correctly, because I have not used these in a while, the micro glitters are actually kind of chunky, and I remember them kind of bugging my eyes a little bit. So I'm going to try them again. I just kind of want to refresh my memory on them. So I'm going to use the sparkling bronze. I think that'll actually be a good match for this eye look. And these are like twist up, twist down products. And they also have a little sharpener at the end. So I'm just going to apply it to my lash line, my upper lash line. Yeah, I can kind of feel the sparkly bits, which is not great. So I'm not going to tight line with this. I'm also not going to put this on my water line, but I will add it to my bottom lash line. Okay, I don't feel the sparkly bits on this eye anymore. Maybe they just needed to kind of like set down. These are waterproof. So um, again, it's kind of the same idea as the eyeshadows. You have like a little bit of time if you want to smudge them out, but they do eventually set down. Maybe that's when I stop feeling the little glittery bits. Yeah, because I don't feel them on this eye anymore either. So that is good, but I would not suggest like tight lining or water lining with this because those glittery bits may be a little irritating. All right, I did not want to open up another mascara and I have this new one from Sisley. This one, this I definitely hauled in my last haul video. This is the So Curl mascara. I swapped one of my So Volume ones for this one and I have it in the color Deep Brown, um, but I really want to try it. So let's just go ahead and open it, right? Life's too short. So this is what the mascara looks like. And oh, it's got a curved wand and it looks like a natural kind of bristly kind of wand. It does not have a funky odor, thank goodness. So let me curl my lashes and then we'll go ahead and apply that mascara. All right, so it looks like there's quite a bit of product on here. So I'm gonna try and wipe some of this off. And let's see if it helps the curl of my lashes, which is a struggle, let me tell you. <laughs> So far, it is better than most mascaras. Most mascaras, as soon as I put it on, any curl that I've added to my lashes, it just starts to fall, like immediately. I can see them <laughs> just start to fall down and it's not happening. It's a little bit on the clumpy side, which is not my favorite, but I can brush it through pretty easily. Not bad, not bad. I do like this more than the So Volume mascara, so I am glad I made the swap. I'm feeling like I need a little bit more blush. I feel like once I do my eyes, I always feel like I need a little bit more blush, like it kind of washes out my face. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, maybe just to the apples of my cheeks here. All right, I have three lip liners from Sicily. <laughs> I pretty much have all of the nude, natural, beige colors. So this one is nude, and then I have Beige Naturel, and then I have Chocolat. So I want to use my Sicily Lafito Rouge in number 11. This is like a very beigey, natural kind of color. And let me see what I think. I think the Beige Naturel is the best match. So I'm gonna use this lip liner. And I think when I hauled uh, these, the Chocolat and the Beige Naturel, I think I hauled first, I am head over heels in love with this formula. It goes on so smoothly, so softly. It just glides right on, but it's not like messy. Like I've had a lot of lip liners that feel the same, but then all of a sudden I notice that they're maybe bleeding a little bit, that they've smeared too much. Like these just have found the perfect medium between being really smooth and soft and pigmented without 
any movement. Like they're not too thin in any way. They're just really, really great. All right, and now for the lipstick. So there's the lip liner and the lipstick. And if you want something a little bit more, you know, like this lipstick can be fairly matte looking. It feels really, really creamy, but it is meant to have more of a matte finish. And sometimes I just want maybe a little bit of a juicier look for my lips. I don't have any Sisley lip gloss, surprise, but I do have some of their Fito lip twists and I've just pulled out number 11, which is, you know, another kind of like beigey, peachy color. And these are very, very creamy. They're slightly sheer and it's really nice to kind of layer on top. So I'm just going to put some just right in the middle of my lips, just to add that little bit of sheen to my lips. So just a hint, uh, you know, not as much as like a gloss would add, but just a little bit, a little bit of juiciness. All right, so there is my look. I, I cannot get over how impressed I am with this powder now that I'm using it underneath the foundation. I really feel like my skin looks like so smooth and blurred. I think that for me, that's the way to go. If you have this powder, you've been trying it different ways and you have like your favorite way, will you please share it down below? Because this is such an interesting product. I have never ever experienced anything like this powder. Uh, even when I used it over foundation, um, aside from the color and the coloring and the pigmentation, it did like a really, really lovely job blurring. And it's so interesting because it is not like powdery at all. It's like this baked formula and there's no like powder kick up whatsoever. So it's just really, really interesting. And I gave you my thoughts um, on all of the products as I went through them, so I won't bore you again, but give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Again, comment down below if you've been using this powder. Subscribe if you haven't already, I would love that. And I'll see you in my next video.